Hey guys, Mike McAlean with another episode of Workout 101 on WorkoutTrainer.com. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about doing a bicep curl using the barbell and the band, but also how angles play a key role in developing the biceps. Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you exactly how to execute and set up the barbell curl utilizing the bands. First things first, because a lot of people now that the gym army and a lot of other people are now seeing the benefits of the bands, they're shooting their own videos. Justin Cam, a lot of these other people are doing it and they're getting a lot of people responding and still what I'm noticing in the comments, people saying, why don't you just add weight? Why are you doing that? Oh, that's stupid. First of all, let's just cut the debate right now. Using the bands has been shown in research studies, actual research studies, University of Lafayette, Louisiana. University of Lafayette, Louisiana did a research study that was published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. It was similar to a study that I myself did for my senior thesis when I was in school and college, seeing exactly what the bands added to a free weight program did when they compared the 1RM to a group of athletes in both the bench press and in the squat. And what they found was individuals executing that exact same workout. The only difference was half of them did it with the bands in the free weight, the other half didn't. The ones who trained with the bands found a 30% increase in their bench, a 35% increase in their squat, and their power output also increased too. So what that shows is that adding the bands does have an advantage over just using free weights. Now, should you do it all the time? Absolutely not, because the body will adapt over time and you will start regressing if you don't change things up. But if you're not using the bands, you need to start using them. So let's explain why that is. First of all, free weight has this funny little thing called momentum, okay? Now I'm just gonna use these weights as an example. These are 10 pound weights. At no point in time does the weight ever change. It's 10 pounds up, it's 10 pounds down, okay? Also, it has this little thing called momentum. Okay, which limits the amount of speed at which your muscle can contract. If I didn't have this weight, I can actually contract really fast. It's called a twitch rate, right? But it limits me when I'm actually using a load that's controlled by gravity. I'm holding the load. It's controlled by gravity. So if I come up fast, I'm all over the place because the momentum carries the load past my point of range of motion where I have to stop or let the weight go up and I lose control. With the bands, that's not the case. Bands can be executed at a fast, rapid pace. When you combine that with the free weight system, such as the barbell does have a load, 45 pounds, but because it's attached to a 60 pound band, the band actually has more resistance than the actual free weight does. So the bar actually mimics the speed because it's being pulled by the band. That's the first thing, how it's different, how it's actually better in most cases. The other case is the fact that the further that I stretch this, the heavier it becomes, okay? Now, if anybody who's ever lifted knows, at certain points in the muscle's range of motion, you can't, you can't really get it up, right? You can't push it, you can't pull it. You're limited because that particular part in the range of motion, and this part right here, I'm actually at my weakest point extended. And that's not because I'm weak here, it's because the biceps really aren't the muscle group that's primarily activated. The brachioradialis and the brachialis are actually the prime movers assisted by the bicep in the first 50%. Only in the movement from here to here is when the biceps really become activated. So my biceps are actually pulling more at the top of the range of motion. That's the reason why we do seated bicep curls because it puts more of an emphasis onto the biceps head. So as the weight ratio is increasing, as I'm getting stronger, my biceps, my body is actually calling on more muscle fibers to fire and be activated in the biceps. So as I stretch this and it becomes heavier, more muscle fibers are being used. And we all know if you use more muscle fibers, you're gonna recruit more muscle fibers because the damage happens, you're gonna get bigger, stronger muscles. The other thing is the rate. I mentioned the twitch rate, how fast you go. As long as you can maintain proper form and technique, you want to try and explode up here Back down. Be fast and powerful with control. By doing that, 
That recruits the type 2B fast twitch muscle fibers, which are the muscle fibers which then convert to type 2A, but they are the muscle fibers that grow the biggest and the strongest. That is this version of the bicep curl utilizing the bands. The second part is, if you notice, I have the attachment point using the Anywhere Anchor in the kits that we have to where the attachment point is in front versus me standing on it. A lot of people will, you know, either stand on the band and do it. So they'll do this to where they stand on the band. Now we're talking about angles, okay? And they'll curl the weight up this way, all right? Why is that different than out here? Well, first things first is that in this motion, straight up, if the weight pulling, line of pull versus line of resistance. Line of resistance is vertical, right? Line of pull is not just vertical, but it also, if you notice here, because my arm is long and this is my fulcrum, my pivot point, as I curl up here, the weight comes forward first. It comes forward first and then starts to go vertical, right? So if we're having the load, which is straight vertical, I'm actually pulling the bands out here first and then it doesn't start becoming really that difficult until the top. And even then, because it comes back, it's no longer going vertical. So the load isn't quite the same when it's directly in front of you because the barbell has a load which is 45 pounds. That still doesn't change, which is straight down. So I'm still getting a load vertically and we can add weight to this. But if you notice the direction of the bands are at a 45 degree angle ahead of my body, that's consistent with the muscle's line of pull versus the line of resistance. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm having more advantage of those muscle fibers getting an actual load throughout the entire range of motion of the exercise because the load is both vertical and horizontal against each direction proportionately that I'm moving. So at no point in time does a load ever change, it just gets progressively heavier. So having it in front like this, as I come up here, you can see the way the barbell is activated the band really doesn't stretch much. It's only when I start going vertical and horizontal upwards that it does. So you can see the difference here. It really puts the load and an emphasis on the way up. And now we're gonna get into kind of like the fast pace. Give it a shot guys, the gym strength bands. They're only available on gymsapani.com. Eventually we will have them on bodybuilding.com which you can purchase them there as well. There's over 400 pounds of resistance in the kit guys. If you want a workout program that utilizes this specific movement and you're watching this video on workouttrainer.com, make sure to click below. My good man, Mikey Mann, will make sure that workout program is there in the post-production of the video. Any more questions, wherever this video is posted, please ask them. I do my best to try and answer everyone. Until next time guys, it's Mike Mackerland. Take care.